What if I told you this keyboard is the computer? And not just any computer, one with mechanical switch, customizable RGB lighting, and a blazing fast NVMe drive built right in. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're setting up the brand new Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, the premium keyboard computer that could possibly change how you think about desktop computing. Unlike the standard Pi 500 that uses a micro SD card, the 500 Plus comes with 16 GB RAM, double the regular model. A 200 256 GB NVMe SSD pre-installed and those gorgeous mechanical switches with RGB backlighting you just saw. The regular Pi 500 has membrane keys and no RGB. This is a completely different experience. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to go from unboxing to a fully working desktop. Before we dive in, let's make sure you have everything. The beauty of the Pi 500 Plus is how little you actually need. The essential items are the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, obviously the USB-C power supply, the official one is the best, monitor or TV with HDMI, micro HDMI to HDMI cable, USB mouse, any will work, optional but nice to have, an ethernet cable for faster more stable internet, a USB hub if you need more ports. A quick tip, the Pi 500 plus uses micro HDMI, that's a really tiny one, don't make the mistake of ordering mini HDMI cables. Let's crack this open, check out what makes this special compared to the regular Pi 500, the mechanical getter and blue switch for membrane keyboard listen to that click RGB backlighting with six presets. The standard 500 has no backlighting. 16 GB RAM, double the 8 GB in the regular model. Built-in 256 GB NVMe SSD. No more slow SD cards. Premium aluminum construction for better cooling. In the box, you also get a keycap cooler for customization, exclusive to 500 plus. A spudger tool for SSD upgrades, also for 500 plus only. This spudger is actually important. The SSD is user approved upgradable, you can swap the 256 GB drive for up to a 2 terabytes NVMe SSD. They designed this to be hackable, not sealed like most keyboard computers. Along the back, DPIO header for your electronics projects, two USB 3.0 ports, the blue ones for fast devices, one USB 2.0 for your mouse, two micro HDMI outputs for dual monitors, gigabit ethernet, a USB-C power input, and a micro SD slot if you ever need it. Setup is literally four cables. Let me show you. Micro HDMI cable goes here. Either port works. Connect the other end to your monitor. Mouse into any USB port. I recommend the USB 2.0 to save the faster one for storage devices. If you have it, Ethernet available, plug it in. USB-C for power. The RGB lights should spring to life. Look at that. The operating system is pre-installed on the SSD, so we're booting straight into Raspberry Pi operating system. This takes a lot faster than SD card setups. Welcome to your desktop. Since the operating system is pre-installed, we jump straight into configuration. The setup wizard walks you through country and language, set your region, create your user, choose a username and a password, Wi-Fi setup if you're not using Ethernet, updates, let it check for updates, this is important. While updates download, let's explore those RGB controls, press function plus F4 to cycle through the six reset patterns. You can also press function plus F5 or F6 to adjust brightness. Let's now set up remote access with the new Raspberry Pi Connect. It's way easier than the old SSH or VNC methods. Look at the top of your desktop. Left of the Bluetooth icon, there's a Pi Connect toggle. Click it to turn it on. Sign in with your Raspberry Pi ID. Create one if you haven't. That's literally it for the setup. Now from your laptop, phone, or any browser, go to connect.raspberrypi.com. Sign in, click connect on your Pi 500 plus. You instantly get full HD desktop access, no port, forwarding, no IP addresses, it just works. On mobile, you can choose between full desktop or just terminal access. Terminal mode is super fast and uses less data. A pro tip, bookmark your dashboard at connect.raspberrypi.com. You can access your Pi from anywhere in the world, even behind firewalls. The next one is optional, but if you still want SSH or VNC for local network access, head to menu, followed by preferences, followed by Raspberry Pi configuration, interfaces, and you'll be able to turn it on. But honestly, Pi Connect is all you need. 
need now. Here's where the Pi 500 gets really special. The keyboard itself runs on a RP2040 microcontroller, making it fully programmable. You can install the configuration tool by first running sudo apt update and then sudo apt install RPI keyboard config. We're ready to start customizing. First, let's get some info about our keyboard. Type RPI keyboard config info dash dash followed by ASCII. Boom, a full ASCII layout of your keyboard. How cool is that? Now let's remap a key. I almost never use the grave accent key, so let's change it to escape. Looking at the map, grave accent is at row 1, column 0. The key code for escape is 41. So if I type in RPI keyboard config K set 1, 0 to 41, just like that, grave accent is now my new escape key. You can find a full list of key codes by typing RPI keyboard config list key codes as shown here. You can remap any key to do almost anything. See how powerful this is? You can create the perfect layout for your workflow. Pro tip, if you messed up, no worries. RPI keyboard config reset key maps brings everything back to default. Let's prove this keyboard is a real Raspberry Pi. We'll blink an LED using the GPIO pins. Just grab an LED of any color, 330 ohm resistor, two jumper wires. The 40 pin GPIO header is right here on the back. Now, heads up, this is horizontal, not vertical like on the Raspberry Pi 5 or 4. Pin 1 is on the left side and the pins go across in rows, not down in columns. For our demo, we'll keep it simple and use direct power from the Pi. Connect the LED's long leg, which is positive, to a resistor using a jumper wire to pin 1, which provides voltage. Connect LED short leg, which is negative, using another jumper wire to pin 9, which is for ground. The moment you connect both wires, the LED should light up immediately. No code required. This proves the GPIO header is providing power. While we use direct power today for simplicity, you can control individual pins with Python code for more complex projects. The fact that this keyboard has a full GPIO header means it's not just a computer, it's also a maker platform. The developers included a little game. Open your terminal and type RPI keyboard config game. Yes, that is a floppy bird running on keyboard LEDs. A fun little demo of what's possible with this hard. And next, let's try typing heat map instead of a digital rain. And now, as you can see, the places that I'm pressing the most are getting the most activity lights. So there you have it, from a sealed launch day box to a fully customized high performance machine. If you want to go further, the Pi 500 Plus is incredibly hackable. You can use the included spudger to open the compartment and upgrade to one terabyte or even two terabytes for swapping the SSDs. The low profile switch accepts standard keycaps. You can customize that. The 40 pin header isn't just for show. As earlier, we were able to connect it to LEDs. You can connect it to motors and other sensors. Both HDMI ports support 4K 60. Perfect if you want to code on one screen and document on another. And there you have it. In this video, we've gone from the box to a fully functional Linux computer. This isn't just another Pi with mechanical switch, customizable RGB, and NVMe storage. The Pi 500 Plus is a legit desktop replacement for many tasks. If this helped you get started, hit that thumbs up and subscribe.